What's up, Dyers? There you go again here, and welcome back to another Left 4 Survival video. Now, this video is going to be a little bit more different than all the other ones that I've actually have done, like the top 5. Well, technically, it's a top 5. But anyway, it's going to be a top 5 of why I think Left 4 Survival stands out against all the other zombie games by a long shot. And I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded in a while, because, you know, prison and all. And basically, we're just going to be ranking, or I'm just going to be ranking... Five reasons, basically what I love about Left 4 Survival that makes this game stand out than all the other zombies. But, yeah, let's do this. So coming into the number five spot of basically why I think this game is probably standing out amongst the other zombie games is the amount of different maps and basically different designs every single map is. Now, a lot of the zombie games, what they have in common is, of course, abandoned locations with either cities, um, beaches, or just facilities and towns. And this game, aka Left 4 Survival, is basically the same thing. Abandoned towns and all. But what I like more is their more creativity ones, like Apocalypse Park, um, Death Canyon, and even Forbidden Valley, which is basically like unknown lands, really. And more or less, the amount of different maps is incredible, especially with the modes and all. My favorite map is, of course, Lead Town, or Lead, whatever it was, the old giant map. I don't know why they removed it, but, eh. But for now, it's gonna have to be the dock map. But, right now, basically, all these maps are my favorite. They have so much design and are all different than one another at the exact same time. And, basically, there's just a lot more places to do and a lot more challenges ahead. Coming into our number 4 spot is the weekly and daily quests. Now, in most zombie games, the games basically make you either play the game to earn the weapon you want by leveling up, or basically spending Robux to get the weapons that are the best, but not in Live for Survival. You can either play the game, kill zombies or humans, and collect the strongest weapons, or if you want to get stronger and stronger weapons, you can complete weekly and daily quests. Now, weekly, of course, give you more, and daily just give you only five. But, as long as you complete them every single day and every single week, you can actually farm diamonds extremely fast, which will make you be able to get all the guns that you really desire. Except, the, of course, the minigun, really. But, other way, this is amazing. Speaking of Robux, next onto our number three spot is the Robux options for the purchases. Now, what I really love about Roblox for survival is that literally every single purchase for the diamonds are super cheap. Basically, under or basically is 400 Robux. And the, the most expensive is 400 Robux, which basically is $5. And with $5, you can get... 3,500 diamonds, which is just absolutely insane in my opinion. Being able to basically buy every single gun with ease without even spending even just a lot of Robux is just so satisfying. If you want to get two of the best weapons, then of course select 400 Robux and you can just get them for like really nothing. That's what I really love. It doesn't charge you a lot, especially the special deal. It only costs a tiny bit. And more or less, you can get better the weapons and better everything without spending your entire savings. While we're still on the topic of weapons, coming into our number two spot is basically how many different weapons, items, and armor things you can select from. There is literally hundreds upon hundreds of basically different types of setups with weapons you can choose from. You could choose all Robux, you could choose all diamonds, you can choose all gold, you can choose gold, diamond, Robux, whatever. There is so much to combine and there are so many choices that it never gets old. Finally, coming into our number one spot is basically how the game is in both sides. And a lot of the zombie games, and basically whenever you die as a human or you spawn as a zombie, the basic premise is that one side will have the huge advantage. Well, not really the same for Left 4 Survival. In Left 4 Survival, you have, of course, two teams, zombies and humans, and depending how you play them both, the game could go either way. In Left 4 Survival, if you're a human, you have to do teamwork. Constant teamwork and basically staying together is how you will win, and also spending a lot of Robux and getting those bastard of a weapons. And that's basically how you win. For zombies, it's basically the same thing. Stick together, be strategic, teamwork, and you will basically win all the time. 
No matter which how you play it depends on which side will actually get the advantage. Instead of humans having the constant advantage like in some other games like well, how I covered Dread, I believe that's what the game was called a few months ago. Um, I basically said how the humans had a huge advantage all the time, and if you were ever a zombie, you would just immediately can't um confirm defeat. But as for survival, it's more or less which side will win if it's a very close game, and that's what I love about this game. This game could go the every single round could go either way. It could be a zombie win, it could be a human win, it could even be a draw depending if it's deathmatch. But Seeing how you never know which team will actually win first, except if the zombies are god tier good and are are basically communicating every single time, or if the humans are, are communicating every single time, or have Robux weapons, and depending how that goes, that will actually change the game, and that's basically it. This game is very equal, but not too equal.